Hello, I'm Michael. Thanks for uh, joining me today. Today is day number five on the 11 26 20 1641 engine build. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install the oil pump, um, the oil you know, sump, and then also the screen and then the, uh, the cover for that. Um, just remember those uh, nuts, um, acorn nuts, are um, very small amount of torque, so you need a, a different torque wrench than we've used before. And then also I'll be showing you um, after we do those, because those are pretty relatively quick um, items, and then we'll be setting the in play. And so um, let's get started, and I hope you uh, enjoy it and uh, learn something from, from this build today. Thank you. The first thing I'm going to do is go over what I'm going to be using today to do the project. Um, I have a gasket for the sump pump, and then the cover, and then also the screen, and then I got the oil pump. Then I have these special oil pump uh, nuts here with a seal on it, and then I have a smaller um, torque wrench there. It, it's in uh, foot inches instead of pounds, and then I have the gray uh, silicone that I use, a gasket maker, and then um, the larger torque wrench as well. First, I'm going to put some silicone on the case side of where the oil pump goes, and then put on the um, the first gasket, and then I'm going to put a little bit bead of silicone on the pump side here, and then put the pump in place. And I do so with a, a rubber mallet, but make sure the the larger sticky outy I don't know what else to call it is on the top because that's where the um, the dowel is going to go through to turn as you uh, enter into the uh, camshaft. Then I use a um, rubber mallet to kind of bang it on so I can a have access to the, the nuts there, um, installing the nuts on the studs. And then I grab the, um, the gears here. And so the, the, oh, I'm obviously using some assembly, engine assembly lube. Then I grab the first gear and then put it in there and make sure that uh, it grabs the camshaft. There's two different sizes. There are the deep camshaft and then the shallow one. Uh, in my case, I have a deep camshaft. And so um, I want to make sure I'm able to not turn this gear when I put it into the pump. And then after that seats, I grab the other one and then make sure I put all the assembly lube. And then I use um, some, some gasket cinch to put on the the other gasket and this is you know less it seals it helps seals it if there's any imperfections and then I put this gasket on and then I grab that pump cover make sure any loose debris or anything is off of it and then I scrape it clean make sure it's good and then I just put it on and then we uh, install the nuts they're 13 millimeter and we I just tighten them up so they're nice and flush and then make sure the seals right these are in they're kind of a plastic seal on these nuts and so they take a little bit to um, get the threaded and get on there so uh, just takes a little bit of time And remember that these are going to be torqued, so don't, you know, uh, just do a little minimum hand, hand tight. Don't kind of arf on them to make them really tight yet. Just getting them all on right now with all the seals and everything. I guess in lieu of that, you could put some of that uh, silicone around this the threads as well to help um, any uh, oil seepage through the... The, the studs there and then the oil pump nuts as seen here go to 14 foot pounds I'm going to set my torque wrench to 14 foot pounds as shown on this chart I kind of torque them in a cross pattern here. The first time was just kind of getting them tight. 
And then uh, the, as they get tighter, I go around and make sure they're torqued. And there you go. The next thing is we're going to rotate the engines so I can have on the top the oil sump. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that any debris um, is off of the this surface here. And so there's a, just a little bit of a um, old gasket on there. I'm going to take that off. And then also I make sure that any of the Permatex leaking through the case halves um, is also um, removed. And so in this case, it looks like the most of the studs are pretty nice. Uh, there is one missing, which I just grabbed a, a, a stud from stock, which you could probably get those from any um, screw supplier place. Um, you can get those from, I, I get them from either Tacoma Screw, if you're up in my area, or you might be even be able to find them at your local hardware store. Um, I also get them from one of my local Volkswagen shops as well. Because oftentimes these go missing or they come out or break or, or whatnot. So after I do that, I'm going to put on the first gasket here. And so I put some Permatex on this one, both sides, on the gasket itself. And then I put it onto the engine case. And then I grab the, um, the strainer screen and then put that on. Sometimes it's, it's a challenge to put these on. I've had it so it wouldn't really fit very well and I had to do some finessing. And then we grab the other gasket and then we put, I put the Permatex on this one. And the Permatex, just so it uh, prevents any leakage from, from the oil here, which this is a heavily oil area. And so what I've done in the past, or before this, is I painted the sump cover black with some high temp um, gloss black paint. Uh, and then I'm putting the acorn nuts on here and then all the little washers. So I put the acorn nuts first before the washers. Sometimes you'll be able to put the acorn on before the washers, but um, in, in most cases, I put the acorns on to kind of seat the, um, the, the, the cover and then just put two of them on and then I put the others with the washers and then I take those two that I did not put washers on and then redo it. And then so the sump screen nuts are five foot pounds. And so the big, um, oh, and then the uh, actual drain plug is 25 foot pounds. And so the five foot pounds for the screen pump nuts is really small for my uh, torque wrench. So I grab that, uh, uh, foot inches and then you go up to 60 pound 60 square inches and that is five foot pounds and so that I'm just going around uh, tightening them up and this one's a little different from my other one which the other one has like a little ticking when it's uh, torqued this one you, it has the gauge where it kind of moves until you see the arrow onto the 60 foot 60 square or excuse me 60 inch pound so after that's done, we can uh, install the drain plug. And so it's this one, I believe, is a 21 millimeter nut. Some of them are 20. Um, so I have both those available. And then torque it down to 25 foot pounds here. And then once that's done, I can rotate the engine around and then do some stuff on the top part of the engine. So we got the oil pump and then the sump pump installed. And then now I'm going to install the oil cooler. I do this before the pistons and cylinders just because it's a little easier to get to. Um, those bottom nuts are are fun. And then now I'm putting some uh, gasket cinch onto the two oil um, gaskets or seals and then I put the oil cooler into there. And then um, there's three nuts that um, go on this oil cooler to get it down. Be careful that it's nice and flush with the case because oftentimes if it's not you can break the case and I've done that in the past and it just um, creates an issue where there's an oil leak where you don't want it to. So when I put the oil cooler on right now because after the pistons and heads are on then I do my compression test and later on I talk about this where I um, forgot to do this I put oil in it and then the oil just goes everywhere and then it goes all over your your freshly rebuilt engine and I don't want to do that 
All right now, I'm going to remove the short block from the engine stand here. We're prepping to do the um, end play adjustments here. Um, a couple things you're going to need here is some shims. Uh, you use three different shims for installing this the flywheel onto this engine, making sure that there's oil in between all shims. Or I, I use the assembly lube. So I'm just cleaning up the the case here before I put the flywheel on and then I'm cleaning up the the place where the oil seal goes on the front of the engine here and um, and just use a screwdriver and scrape off any gooing uh, or permatex that oozed out when the two halves were installed and then I'm going to go grab the flywheel and bring it over here um, Just be careful because the fly was rather heavy and I always try to have one hand on it when I'm working on the engine so it doesn't fall off and like hit my foot or anything like that. So here's all my shims for my flywheel here. There's all different sizes here and I, it looks like I need to go get some more. So I've already um, taken a flywheel or crankshaft out of an engine so I just grabbed that setup and seeing if it works. A lot of times um, I've had it where I would had to do this, you know, half an hour, an hour, trying to figure out what the size here is. So I, I lock the flywheel so it doesn't move, and then I take a breaker bar and then the 36 inch millimeter, excuse me, 36 millimeter socket, tighten everything down, and I try to tighten it in such a way where I can have it a good estimate of what the in play is and then I take my special tool here it's a, a magnet where I flip the switch and it turns it on and then I'm pushing the flywheel back and forth to see what it is I'm going to show you here what the gauge looks like when I'm looking at it when I'm pulling it back and forth and then sometimes I use a pry bar to make sure I get an accurate reading so currently you want to uh, or I try to get it to about 10 to 12 um, and th that's just because in the grand scheme of things or what you really want is 5 to 7 and so th remember this gland that torques to about uh, 235 265 or so I, I have it on my cheat sheet but um, found foot pounds and so that's a lot of torque and so oftentimes I found that if I set it to 5 to 7 right now then I don't get any in play after I torque the gland nut all the way. And I usually torque the gland nut after pistons and cylinders are done. And then I just go and um, you could look at my other video about how to you know, torque down or remove a gland nut. It's uh, similar to installing it. So here I'm. it's about 10 or 11. And so that's pretty good for me. Um, sometimes after I tighten the gland nut, then it, that's not enough. So I have to untighten it and do this whole process over. It's just kind of a, not necessarily trial and error, but kind of like that. And you just want to make sure it's at least five. Now we want to remove the flywheel and the flywheel lock. And on the opposite side of this flywheel, there is a uh, O-ring, a black O-ring usually. Um, I'm going to replace here momentarily. That's located in the seal kit or gasket set that you got. I'm going to kind of oil it down with uh, engine assembly lube before I put the new one in. And that engine assembly lube, I just pick it up from my local hardware or auto parts store, and it lasts, um, I think three to four engine builds it's really it's really nice stuff and a little bit it goes a long way this particular oil gasket that I'm going to be putting on oil seal is a double and so I put two different ones on there 
instead of the uh, stock single. So hopefully there's an extra, you know, the, the idea is there's an extra steel to create a more performance or so your engine performs better and the engine stays inside. And then I uh, put engine assembly lube on the part that touches the flywheel. We don't want to um, wear it out before it gets um, oil to it. And then I'm just re kind of installing the gland nut here. Just really hand tight, kind of really arf on it. Use a hammer if you need to. I'm just rechecking the uh, in play here like we did just a little bit ago. And so that's all done. So I'm going to put this sword block back on the engine stand and then get it ready for uh, pistons and cylinders and the heads for our next day that we're going to be doing here. And if you don't have an engine stand, you can do this uh, without it. It's just a little bit more challenged, but um, I, uh, I highly recommend engine stand. You know, this bench mounted one I think is 50 to $75. And then I also have one on wheels that is about 100 to $150, which they're, they're pretty, pretty low cost for what it is. And uh, just be careful of the one that's on the stand um, with the wheels because it could tip over. All right, thank you for joining, joining me today for uh, day number five for the 112620-1641 engine rebuild. Um, I just kind of recap, I went over that oil pump install, um, oil sump screen and uh, the cover install, and remember those are very small torques. And then I set the in play, and then I also in, installed the oil cooler just because um, Next time on day f six, when we do the pistons and cylinders and heads, um, eventually I'm going to do a compression test, and I've done it where uh, put some oil in there and then did the compression test, and all the oil would come out of the two holes of the oil cooler, and uh, yeah, it was fun. But anyways, thanks for uh, joining me today, and uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, look forward to um, seeing you on the next one, and then also a like and a comment below. If you have any questions or if you wanted to see anything as far as uh, you know a vintage Volkswagen items that you might need to get repaired or uh, see how they're done in the field so anyway thanks so much and uh, have a great day see you in the next one okay I just remembered uh, the next uh, day six is going to be pistons heads and push rods and push rod tubes installed um, just give yourself about three four hours to do that uh, next step because it's, it's it's relatively simple, it just takes a while to put everything together. All right, uh, see, ya, see ya on the next one.